When Gregor Robertson won a second term as Vancouver mayor last November, many weren't surprised. After all, Gregor's vision Vancouver party had swept into power back in 2008 with an ambitious agenda, end homelessness, improve public transit, and make Vancouver the world's greenest city. Now, what is surprising is how he got here. He started off wanting to be a doctor, but he didn't get into med school, so he did the obvious thing. He became a cowboy in the wilds of British Columbia. After that, he spent 18 months sailing the Pacific with his wife, Amy, as one would do. He then gave farming a shot, settled in New Zealand. All of this, by the way, before he turned 25. But in New Zealand, something happened. Gregor got soaked with chemical herbicide on the industrial farm where he worked, and the experience set him on his current path. He and his family returned to BC, where Gregor started an organic farm and juice business, which is called Happy Planet. Now, he entered politics in 05. Hasn't always been smooth sailing. He was criticized for the way the city handled the Vancouver riots. Thousands of people got swept up in it, which made it very difficult for police to respond and to manage the hot spots. And for the way he handled Occupy Vancouver. We've made it clear that it needs to end, and uh, it's not okay for people to encamp them there on the public space permanently. His supporters point to his plans to make Vancouver an environment environmental leader and Gregor himself an avid bike commuter but in case you're thinking wow what a cool mayor I should tell you this he does also play the tuba please welcome the mayor of Vancouver his worship Gregor Robinson how are you doing how you thank you see you good to be here welcome to the show great to be here nice things things are good yeah they're, they're all good. right you got yeah. another re-election under your belt were you worried about it uh, I wanted my whole team in. It's all about the team. Is it really? And I've got a fabulous team. You sound Vision like Maker a hockey team. player when you say that. <laughs> Imagine that. Really? No, but I'm, is being a mayor what you thought it Because you're not the guy that set out to be a career politician, right? So That's true. Is it what that's you thought true. it would be? It's, uh, it's better than I thought it would be. Really? And that's uh, credit to our city. We've got a great city. Vancouver's a fantastic city. One of the most multicultural cities in the world now. Uh, with a, a real ethic of, uh, of making this a greater city and contributing to the rest of the world. So it's a, it's a real privilege and an honor to serve in this role. It's a tough job. Never, I, you, know, you can't underestimate how difficult it can be for all of us who are serving in, in, uh, on the team. But uh, we've got a great city and it's, it's a pleasure to serve. What are the real challenges of doing this? Well, there's, it's twofold. There's, there's the nuts and bolts of running a city, which is difficult in the best of times. Uh, and it's, you know, pick up the garbage. If you don't pick up the garbage and plow the snow and, and do those basics, then yeah. you're not the mayor for very long. <laughs> but that stuff, you got to look after the, the basics of running a city. But the new global context right now is all about cities. It's the, we're seeing the rise of cities around the world. And how cities grow over the next couple of decades is the future of human beings. And that, that's a really key piece. How we, we're going to see, right now we're seeing about 200,000 people a day moving into cities from right. the countryside every single day. And how we build, how we essentially double all the cities of the world over the next 30 years is, is going to decide our fate. In one of the most bizarre alternate reality time warps, Ned Nenshi is the mayor of Calgary and Rob Ford is the mayor of Toronto. It, it, it's like, it, stereotypes were broken in that respect. It, you and Rob Ford have different ways of approaching big cities, but as the mayors of the two biggest English-speaking cities in the country, how important is that relationship, and do you guys have a relationship? We do. I, I met with uh, Rob a couple weeks ago. I was in Toronto and um, gave him a Grey Cup football, yeah. signed by our BC Lions. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, did he ask you? Did he ask you for a smaller ball that's more NFL friendly? <laughs> No, I, you know, and it's, uh, he obviously faces unique challenges in Toronto. Uh, I mean, we, Canadian cities are, are, uh, are great cities. You know, if you, you compare us to the rest of the world, a lot of great things are happening in Canadian cities. Uh, we do need more support from our provincial and federal governments. They, don't, they, don't, they haven't really caught on to the rest of the world is investing in their cities and putting their focus there. And cities are kind of driving the pace. And I'm sure you heard this from uh, Nahed Nenshi. We, we need to be investing more. Cities need to have more leadership and, and more stake in the game right now. And that, that makes it difficult right now. We don't have enough. Well, how do you do it? Because, you know, uh, you hear an awful lot. Toronto has the same situation uh, with homeless issues, um, which are obviously tied to bigger issues like mental health and, and that. But, you know, we hear about the drug addiction problem. And if you do wander around the streets of Vancouver, you can see that there are some significant challenges with addiction here. How much can a mayor actually do as it relates to something like the addiction problems and homelessness? We could do a lot. There's, there's no doubt with uh, 
the leadership role here, we, we can make change, but it, it totally relies on collaboration. We, we have to have strong partners. We don't collect, we collect 8% of the tax revenue across the country directly into cities. So we have to have funding partners because they collect almost all the tax uh, from our federal and provincial governments. But we, we have the leadership. I mean, I, I ran saying it's not okay to have thousands of people homeless in, in our streets. In, in this region, we can't go there. And when it starts to get personal, when you are on the streets and you look into the eyes of someone who can't get off the streets, there's nowhere for them to go. And for whatever set of reasons, uh, they're, they're struggling and they're down. And we have to help those people up one at a time. You have to have political leadership. How important is insight to this community? Or what does it mean to you? Insight's been huge at saving lives in the downtown east side, which, is, which has been the toughest place for, for our addicts. But you know that there's a, a significant segment of the population, some would even say in government, that look at something like Insight and all they see is the fact that you're creating a safe place for people to do drugs. How do you, how do you what would you answer to that? Well, in Vancouver, we've, uh, we have had our healthcare researchers and community researchers looking at this for years and years, and they, you know, dozens and dozens of peer-reviewed studies that say, this is saving lives, this is saving us money, it's the humanitarian thing to do, and it's evidence-based, it's, it's working. You have to take a healthcare approach to uh, drug addiction, frankly. Uh, the, the war on drugs approach has not worked anywhere. A healthcare approach is what is gonna do it. Absolutely, I agree with you. Um, so, but that's not, you know, that's not a knee-jerk thing. That, that has to be steeped in the science, the right. evidence. What is the ev evidence? I mean, we, that's what we have to, to, to fall to back on here is, is what, what are the numbers showing us? Not only what are the people who are, who are transforming their lives showing us, but let's see the data on this and, and act on that. The data shows that the, the economic system has been very challenging for most people. So when Occupy happened, a lot of people looked at Occupy as the 99% the standing up. As a mayor, I know that there's probably a part of you that really likes what they're doing, but then you had to kick them out. And do you, do you, was that the right move? It was challenging because it's, it's been a global movement and, uh, and was extraordinarily successful at, at, uh, at getting attention globally. Uh, the problem is it's, it, they were local encampments and cities, and cities have no tools to deal with uh, the, the issues around the fi global financial institutions, that they're not paying their way, uh, that they're sucking out our economy. So we, we had to deal with the tent camps, which became very dangerous in a number of cities around the world, including Vancouver. And you know we try to answer to the homelessness problem that that ended up being fused into it. But uh, you know it's people have a right to protest uh, in this country. We respect that. We uphold that. But we got to balance off the fact that uh, this is public space, and um, people do need to to move on and, and reshape and evolve their protest for actually achieving an outcome here. And I hope that that the out, that movement needs to to come back and, and do something and deliver on something. I think that's what everyone's expectation. I think, and I think that we haven't heard the last of them for sure. Um, Probably not. Part of this is the cult of personality. I mean, the idea, I've, see, I saw, I've actually seen you ride your bicycle down the street here in the rain thinking, mayor's riding his bike in the rain. Have people ever cut you off? Have you flipped on the bird? Have you had that moment like that? You have, have you? You, yeah, yeah. No, you don't do it like that. You probably do it like this, right? That's how. I, it's funny when uh, when we, we we announced that you were coming on the show, people were very excited about it. And part of the reason was this. Can we just play this? And need to explain yourself. Too sexy for my love. Too Have you sexy seen it? For my love. <laughs> I'm assuming. I'm, uh, I'm assuming that wasn't part of your campaign re-election, <laughs> but I don't know. No, no that was uh, not what I had in mind. <laughs> How much I, of a, what do you think of that stuff? I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> How much of the cult of personality plays into this? Well, it's, it is politics. Politics is, is partly about that, but it's also about getting stuff done and making a difference. And my, you know, my hope in coming into politics was to demonstrate we can do politics differently. I think there's a whole new generation of us coming into politics and saying, we can do things better. We can, we can do things to serve future generations and make life better today for everybody. We just gotta be smarter about it. We gotta engage the community a lot better. And, uh, and not be afraid to speak the truth and, and challenge all of the assumptions right now. That, we're in a tough pickle at, right now in cities across the country. 
Uh, we look at the evidence, what the science says about climate change, about our future. We got to take serious action on this stuff. And so, uh, you know, whatever tools we got to use, uh, if it's the cult of personality that can help drive this, then I hope more people get involved, use their whatever they got to, uh, to make this change happen. You have a, a rare opportunity at a second chance. You, you might get another run of the Vancouver Canucks in the playoffs. And there was much was made about what happened with the riots. What do you do differently? Well, we have a game plan uh, that's very different. We're actually doing celebrations throughout the city, all community centers, block parties. We're, we're basically decentralizing the celebrations. We've, uh, we're working with the Canucks and the TransLink on the transit side, making sure we don't get train loads of uh, drunk hooligans coming downtown for Game 7. We hope that we're back in Game 7, that we're winning the Stanley Cup this year, and we're going to celebrate responsibly. Are you afraid? <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Gregor Robertson, his worship from Vancouver. It's great to see you, man. Thank you. 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 Thank you.